All right, so on the Tuesday evening, we were able to hit diamond rank in uh, Masterful Season 19. You can see here, playing for about 30 minutes, um, our streak was broken on the, the 10 win streak on our first match of the day, and I'll, I'll actually go over this loss. Uh, but then we won the next three to uh, hit diamond, and these, these were pretty funny matches. Uh, um, yeah, you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. This is actually kind of crazy. Uh, overall, though, our whole run in Platinum rank, you know, still in the last 20 matches, 90% uh, win rate, 18 wins, 2 losses. So Floandry is still proving to be a force. Let's see how effective it is in Diamond, and hopefully we can get to Master soon and then grind out for the rest of the month to hopefully hit Master 1. Uh, but again, decklist video will be in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at the matches for today. So to start off this video, I'm going to actually go over the third match that I played for the day. Um, so yesterday on the Monday night, I won three coin tosses in a row, and then today on the Tuesday night, I lost three coin tosses in a row. So this was the third match in a row on the day that I lost a coin toss, so obviously I'm going second here, which is impactful because, you know, our hand is actually amazing to go first with, but we do have the evenly matched. The opponent reveals it on Rika, which usually doesn't have an out to evenly, so it evenly usually beats them, unless they're playing this right here, which is the Therion package. So. In this matchup here, I'm not going to break it down super in depth because I will do like a 15 minute video that I already have recorded on this match where I break down the insane intricacies of this match. So definitely stay tuned for that. But essentially the, the gist of it is Rika puts up an insane board with like five to seven interruptions. Um, it does have its deficiencies because you're basically overextending putting all your eggs in one basket on turn one and if the board does get broken you have very limited follow-up you need you people who play this deck don't really know how to play it properly it is very powerful when you do know how to play it good example is the euros two years in a row rika won both um and those people know how to play rika properly they know how much to extend they know how to play the grind game most people first of all don't even know how to play against this deck let alone um, how to play it properly so like I said, I'll go over the intricacies because I've played this deck before and I know some of the stuff pretty well. Um, but I can already tell like where this opponent was going. They took like a good five minutes or longer to set this up. Look at this. They're down to seven cards in their extra deck. They're already down to over half of their deck being gone almost. Um, yeah, they're going to be down to six cards because they're about to bring out Benji here. Like what follow up do you have if your board gets broken? To be fair, this is an extremely hard board to break and it's very unlikely. So we essentially need to draw into and or duality into a Book of Moon, uh, another evenly matched, or a Dark Ruler no more. Pretty good odds. Yeah, the opponent's not down to five cards. There's no reason to bring this out right now. And again, I'll explain the intricacies of, intricacies of it in, in that in-depth breakdown video. We have to worry about this Therion negate. This is the card that's blocking the evenly matched. And the thing about Therion is that it doesn't negate and destroy, it just negates. So if I try to go map to bait the Therion, the map will end up staying on field, killing the evenly. If I try to go evenly first, they just negate it and then evenly is dead. So I need to draw another card to bait the Therion King so that my evenly match can be live. So we, we draw Dreaming Town and then the pot misses getting Shifter, Apex and another pot. So I just end up going for map. The opponent uses their Regulus to negate um, and I'll, I'll break this down more in depth in my, in my other video, but Therion King is kind of like Marincess Argonaut. You need to negate the effect of the card, not the activation, um, unless that activation is the, is the actual effect of the card, if that makes sense. So if, you're, if I play a continuous spell or a field spell and you negate the card on activation, that doesn't actually negate anything because the card stays on the field. The effect is not negated. So he messed up there and that was basically my only out. Um, so now that he messed up, I'm still not out of it because he has like four or five more disruptions. Um, so we're not able to activate map effect because he didn't negate the effect, he negated the activation. Um, and again, we have to, because I know how this deck plays, I have to play very specifically. So the Sacred Tree Beast now negates the Toucan, that's fine because it means Toucan doesn't come back to hand, but Eaglin will resolve. I talk about this in my other video as well, understanding the difference between targeted negates and chainable negates. So the Rika cards don't really target negate, they negate like the last effect on the chain. So a monster effect was last activated. Sacred Chibis can negate that effect. It doesn't negate the, you know, doesn't target and negate the Eaglin. So we are able to get uh, Empent to hand. Uh, the opponent on the second summon, again, we know this is going to happen. They're going to sheet, tribute with Concon, take the Eaglin. That outs both of our monsters here, but it doesn't negate them. So we're able to normal summon Street because we searched it off of the Robina here. Robina is going to come back to hand. Um, their Princess in Graveyard is not live because, again, they messed up. They did not leave a Rick of Monster on field to tribute for Princess. Uh, again, you don't 
go into Sacred Tree Beast during your turn, you leave the Strena on field. You go, during, you go into Sacred Tree Beast during my turn. So again, people don't know how to play the deck properly. But you, you, I mean, the opponent comboed off really well, right? Like they know the deck, they're not like a noob, um, but they just made suboptimal plays that in the end it's gonna hurt them. Because like I said, if I can break this board, their follow-up is like very little. So off of the Street Resolving, we Normal Summon Robina, and the opponent opts not to Benji. Big mistake, they probably forgot that I had my Normal Summon for turn still. So if they benji that, that's game over, I lose, right? Uh, so again, not realizing the interaction, the game state, I'm able to double tribute, bring out the Empin. Now Empin is gonna negate the Benji. So Benji's offline. Now I make a misplay here um, because I'm really thinking hard about what I want to attack, and I should have gone for the Regulus here. And I did think about this long, like a, a good 30 seconds. I end up going for the Sacred Tree Beast, which is a mistake because I know that Konkon's going to tribute off my Empin next turn. I know two of their cards in hand, Princess, Primula, and a Mystery card. Um, the first action of the next turn, if they turn Regulus to Defense, that turns this Negate online, um, which can negate my Dreaming Town. So huge mistake on my part when I look back. I, I actually did think about this and I thought this through, but I was like, I really don't want them to get... Like, I don't want to keep the Sacred Tree Beast on board and just have it build up materials to constantly interrupt me. Whereas I can deal with maybe one Omni Negate and that outs the Therion package. And I'm betting on the fact that they don't have much follow-up. If I out one of their key resources here, once the Regulus is, is used for the Omni Negate, they're limited in their follow-up, right? They have five cards left in their extra deck. And if I know Rika, one's a Teardrop, one's a second Strena, one's a Thrasher, one's a third Dryas, and then like it might be like a second Jasmine or something, right? So just knowing the deck, I, I can kind of tell what they're on. So we end up activating the Unexplored Winds, getting our Eaglen back, setting two cards, passing turn. The opponent's first action is Lone Fire. So we're going to right away tr uh, activate Dreaming Town because we know that the opponent is going to um, now use the Princess. Now that they brought a Rika card on field, they're going to use Princess Negate, use Konkon to tribute one of my cards here, right? So, yep, um, the Street on the second round of Banishing is going to target the Malias. Not that it really matters at this point. We, we outed the one of Sewing, which can be banished to protect this card from battle. Um, so that's meaningful there, um, or any kind of destruction, really. But there's not really any super good targets. Petal, you know, they're going to get another one in rotation. Princess, they already have all three in rotation. The Petal is not live because of Therion King being a machine. Um, so again, just knowing how the deck plays, we're able to kind of I guess I'll play the opponent if that's the right term, I don't know. Um, but again, we expected all this, they're going to bring Primula because they tributed a monster on their field during the chain, the chain's going to resolve. Um, making the Tuk in the last chain means that the Robina does come to hand because it was chain blocked and the negated effect was the Tukin's effect off Princess. Okay, so chain's going to resolve and now we went from 0 to 100, outing the opponent's Omni Negate with the um, resolving of the effects because we understand how the chain resolves. Street, you know, you can't in, in the middle of a chain activate an effect. We applied the continuous effect of unexplored winds to resolve the Street effect, right? This is not a new effect activating within the chain, it's just the application of the effect, which is how we're able to tribute the opponent's regulus, get it off field that clears the Omni Negate, and we put our own Omni Negate on board. Even stronger is we are now going to banish the trap card to flip their Rika cards face down. And off the Benji, we're going to easily negate and destroy that. And again, if you know this deck, which again I do, Benji's effects, you can't banish the Link monsters to bring it back because it's only one Benji effect per turn. They use the effect to target and, and spin back. They can't use the effect to banish and bring back. Um, so very significant there. They can't use this Benji until their next turn now. So effect's going to resolve. They're going to be forced to normal summon now using the Glamour. They have two mystery cards and a princess in hand still, I believe. They grab Petal and they grab Low Size. So I'm like, that's fine. You've got no more Healer because you've used both at this point. Um, and you have one more Dry Ass that really doesn't do anything because I doubt you play two Sewing. And even if you did, you probably only play one Sunsea Twin. And you just brought your final Low Size to hand. So again, you've burned through too many of your resources and it's like GG's. We end up normal summoning Eaglen. The opponent had the Ash as one of their mystery cards, so of course we're stopped. Would have been nice to use the Ryza lock at this point because that would have sealed up the game, but the opponent is going to be able to survive a little bit longer here. Petal effect activate, grab Princess that they put back during uh, this turn itself because they've got all three in rotation again. No other cards to search. Again, when I play Rika, I have two sheets and one uh, Tranquility because I'm preparing for the grind game. This opponent only plays one trap, all they can do is bring out their third Konkon from their deck because they've already used two, and that does nothing because they've already used Konkon this turn, and they've used 
um, or oh, sorry, they use, you bring up the third Glamour from their deck, sorry. And they can't use Concon Effect because they've already used Concon Effect this turn to tribute off the Empin. So they're gonna Special Summon Princess, Link Off, Pedal for Dryas, and just like I told you, they got four cards left, 13 cards left in their deck. They're, they are out of engine. They, they overextended turn one. Um, so at this point, I'm like not worried about any interruption except for this Princess. So first action of main phase one, use Unexplored Winds, get the Princess off the field, bring out Apex. This Concon is now offline. The only thing we have to worry about is Dryas, which we can easily deal with with the normal summon off map. And we're gonna go ahead and bring the Eaglin back. Sure enough, that's what we're gonna do now. Activate map, go through the rotation, make a slight misplay here, but I'm not gonna go in depth about it. I'll talk about it in the uh, full analysis video of this match where I break down, like I said, a lot of the intricacies. So it, it's it's it's, in, it's inconsequential, we still have game. So we're gonna use Unexplored Winds to get the Snowl on board and get the extra normal summons. Uh, and that outs the Dryas effect and um, they have a Primula flip face down, I believe, and a Glamour set, right? So super non-threatening. We know, I think, two of the cards in hand, Loci and Princess. And then their mystery card is revealed to be Ash, which doesn't do anything. We have Lethal on board. And that is how we're able to come back and easily, well, not easily, but through the opponent making some critical missteps. Um, again, just maybe not understanding the interactions or whatever, not, not trying to make them seem like a terrible player or anything. You know, it, it happens to everybody, it happens to me. They just probably didn't understand how the interactions with Flo Andres works because they don't play it that often. Um, but we were able to take that match thanks to those missteps because uh, otherwise we definitely would have lost. All right, and for the final match to get into diamond rank, this was the fourth match of the night and we finally won the coin toss going first. And my opening hand, I'm like, okay, it's te technically a little playable because if they have Ash, I have called by. I, they just scoop as soon as I activate um, Advent of Adventure, banishing Ryza, which should indicate to them that I have a really bad hand, but I guess they just really didn't want to play against uh, Flo Andere. So that was the match, like I said, you know, I only lost three matches in all of Platinum rank. One, I don't even know how many, but over 20 for sure. In the last 20 matches, you know, 90% win rate, so Flo Andere is still doing stuff. Take a look at the opponent's decks here. This guy was on Bestial Pendulum. Uh, okay, so yeah, they're going for like all the Omni Negate setups. This deck is very hard to beat going first. Um, I actually, this is actually one of the decks I lost to, one of my three losses in uh, in Platinum rank. We know that this guy was on Rika. Uh, we know this guy was on Dynamorphia. And this guy was on, <laughs> which I guess, if I'm putting this clip in the video with the Rika match, uh, I'll post this this loss in another video. Yeah, this, this deck, I was like, I can't believe I lost to this. But you know, when you go second and you kind of brick, um, yeah, that's how it goes. But yeah, he's on a tier limit with Eldlich, one Kurikara. Yeah, one, yeah, very interesting deck list. But yeah, if you want to see this, uh, make sure you stay tuned, subscribe. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and drop a comment. It would be appreciated. That's going to be it for now, and for now though. Thank you for watching. Quantum is out.